Hey folks, what's up? So we're on our way to the roastery today to cup some coffee and just like get the day started. Let's go cup some coffee. You can tell. So that part is fading. <laughs> 22. Then you spilled it. I did spill it. But I had every way So there you go, straight on our doesn't always matter. No, I'm just kidding. I actually think that this is like, this is one of those things you want to probably chalk up to age. Try the same thing for the Mario. So I'm back from the roastery and I spent most of my time there cupping today. What that means is I'm just brewing the coffee very simply. I'm not filtering it. I'm kind of just doing like a set amount of water, a set amount of coffee. I'm mixing it and then I'm trying to understand little differences between the coffee that I'm tasting. Today we tasted nine different coffees. Four of the coffees were old roast versus new roast. So we're trying to differentiate if the different roast profiles that we're doing are gonna be better or worse, or at least seeing how coffee changes over time. And then we got to taste some new Kenyan coffees that just arrived. We had three different sample roasts on our tiny little roaster and then one of our test batches on like the big roaster. So then on that side, we're kind of just seeing how the coffee is gonna move from a small sample to a full production. And we might change different variables when we're approaching the roasting side, but we found out that like the coffee is super sweet, it has nice acidity, it has really lovely body, and it's just like a really nice coffee that we get to work with. Yeah, so that's what we did today. So next up, Joe is going to a party this weekend and he needs bread. And because I'm the best boyfriend in the world, we're making a loaf of fresh sourdough. So let's get into it. When you're thinking about making sourdough, you obviously need a sourdough starter to make Levan. This is the Levan. So I fed sourdough starter last night. I did 40 grams of sourdough starter to like 80 grams of flour and 80 grams of water or something like that. So we've got a fair bit of like Levan here. This is gonna be the fermentation in the bread. So no yeast, just this. It's very lively. When you smell it, it smells like sweet and yeasty and yeah, alive. I'm gonna need 250 grams of this bread flour. I picked this up from a local uh, like baking store. So try and get some good quality flour. It really makes a big difference when you're making sourdough. Got some good quality all-purpose flour. Another 250. Mixy mixy that. Make sure it's all nice and incorporated together. If you want to use a whisk for this part, it's probably better than your hands. We're going to set aside 425 grams of water. Room temperature, kind of like body temperature. When you dip your hand in, it could, should kind of feel like slightly warm. And again, if it's like a really hot day, it can be a little bit cooler of water because you don't want the fermentation to go too fast. Depending on the kind of day it is, you adjust your water temperature and that's how you like speed up or slow down your fermentation. You grab 12 grams of salt. Now's a good time to get a bench scraper. So we have our flour in a bowl, but we're gonna need something that's like a sealable container like this. And we're gonna take the olive oil. And we're just gonna coat the sides. So we're gonna take our water and our Levan. I left the Levan outside of the fridge last night to proof all night. So it's all nice and fresh and it's like ready to be used. It's kind of floating on top of the water. That means it's ready to go. We're gonna mix it into the water completely. Got our bowl of flour and we're gonna dump all this in. Just gonna mix everything together. I like to just use one hand for this because it's gonna get kind of icky. So right now you should be smelling like a lot of that sourdough, just like come up. It should be very fermenty and nice and like beautiful smelling. It should smell like yeast. Once it's nice and incorporated, we're just gonna scrape it away from the sides. Make sure there's no dry spots. And at this point I'm kind of just like checking for like moisture content. And I think we could use just another splash. And just like a couple of grams of water significantly will change your um, consistency. So a little bit at a time. Going into our container. So this 
point is called an auto lease. We haven't added any of our salt. That's the only thing that we have left to add. So right now the fermentation is just gonna be really quick. It's gonna be a little bit wild. The gluten is gonna start developing on its own. So we don't really need to be kneading it or like touching it at all at this point. We really want that like natural rapid fermentation to kind of just take place and kickstart a little bit. And then when we add the salt in about 10 minutes, it's gonna slow it back down and have a little bit more of a gentle and nuanced fermentation. If we just left it like this without salt, it would proof really quickly and then fall really quickly and it wouldn't be able to be controlled. So that's why we add the salt, but we wanna like help it a little bit. So we have some gluten forming as you can see, so we're gonna add our salt. If you end up having a hard time with your salt inclusion, you can always add a little bit of your water. You can like reserve some from your initial deposit and then um, that will help incorporate it a little bit better. And the gluten is forming really well so you don't have to worry too much about um, breaking the gluten strands because we have a long time to fix them. I think I'm supposed to add the olive oil after the salt inclusion We'll just do that here. So we're just gonna pop our lid on and this is gonna be the first 30 minute rest. Every 30 minutes we're gonna fold it. I'm gonna aim for five or six different folds and then after that we will shape it, put it in the fridge overnight and then bake it tomorrow. It's time for our first fold. Get our hands nice and wet. And we're just folding it onto itself. If it's picking up on any of the sides, we kinda just wanna tuck that underneath. Get it nice and tight. We're just gonna do the final fold here. It's looking like it has some good strength to it. A lot of air, it's nice and like bubbly. Yeah, so on these last few folds, I'm just being very delicate. I'm trying to keep as much of that air as possible. So the sourdough has been folded five times and it is looking jiggly and beautiful. At this point, I dust it with some rice flour. First, I'm just gonna go like straight onto the countertop with a nice rice flour um, coating because it doesn't have gluten. So it's not gonna like absorb into my high hydration dough and continue to get sticky on the counter. It's gonna be like a little bit of a barrier. Now we're just relaxing it out. And this part just helps build some strength. So we're just going to take this, we're gonna pinch here, take this side, fold it over, pinch there, this side, fold it over, pinch there. And then two bunny ears, making sure there's no big bubble in the center. Pinch there and pinch there. Flip it over. And you know, we're just gonna make sure it's nice and tight and pretty round. We're gonna let it rest for another 10 minutes and then I'm gonna do one last shape and then into the bread basket. So 10 minutes passed up. We're gonna put a bunch of rice flour here, same thing as before, having this ready, into our hand, and then into the basket. And then a bit more rice flour around the edges here, just so that as it relaxes in the fridge overnight, it feels nice and happy. So this is what she looks like in the nice little bread basket. And that's all for today, and we'll see you tomorrow.
and we're back in the kitchen. Today we're gonna bake that sourdough bread. Right now we are gonna make a chermoula butter. So we're gonna bring the butter to room temp and we're gonna whip it with some tasty ingredients. Cumin, coriander and smoked paprika, garlic, parsley and cilantro and then some fresh lemon juice. This is a very fancy French butter. So once we make the butter, we're gonna pop it back into here so it's a cute little to-go container. And when it gets like a really nice and like creamy consistency, this is when we can start adding our stuff, our garlic and our spices. And we're gonna add our herbs. Gonna add in some salt. Adding in some lemon. Add in a little dash of cayenne. That's a banging butter. And here we have our charmoula butter. And this is what the sourdough is looking like. It's nice and full, nice and dry on this side, so it won't stick to the cast iron. It has some good jiggle to it. It looks like it rose up a fair bit as well, which is lovely. That means nice, healthy fermentation. So next we're gonna pull the Dutch oven out. It's been sitting at 445 Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes now. We're gonna bake it for 20 minutes and then we're gonna take the lid off and bake it for another 20 minutes as we drop the heat down to 180 Celsius or whatever that happens to be in Fahrenheit. Take a bit of our rice flour, dust the bottom of the pan, it will smoke a bit. And then we're just gonna go like this around all the way to make sure our sourdough has released from the sides and we don't have any sticking, which is good. Into our hand. Very carefully set it into the Dutch oven with a sharp knife. We're gonna score it. So this is what it should look like. Take our lid, pop it back on, and into the oven. All right, first 20 minutes are up. Let's take this off. Would you look at that? Now the hard part. This is my beautiful looking sourdough. It could probably have a little bit better caramelization on the outside, so on that second temperature, you might be able to jump it up to more like 375 or something like that. But it is beautiful. Look at that. Also, you can add in like whole grain flour to these if you'd like. Um, you just have to adjust your hydration. And unfortunately, I don't get to cut into this sourdough today because Joe is taking it to a party tonight. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know what you want to see more of. All right, peace.